Hello everyone and Happy New Year's. I've had a much needed break and I'm happy to be back to bring you some content. I will try my best to talk about what's been going on regarding the Mr. FPGA and other FPGA related topics during my absence, but if I miss anything, please let me know in the comments. If you have a PC that you use for emulation, then there is a project that lets you use the Mr. FPGA as a GPU that can output to a CRT. Getting a modern PC connected and configured for a CRT isn't trivial, so this project can be helpful for those who have a PC and Mr. FPGA. The project is called Groovy Mr. and it works by installing a core that turns your Mr. into a GPU that can be accessed over the internet. For the PC, you will need specific builds of some emulators to access the Mr. FPGA. Currently, there are builds of Groovy Mame, Mentnafen, and RetroArch. Keep in mind that the Dreamcast core for RetroArch is not currently compatible with this. I haven't tried this, but the GitHub claims very low latency and testing with an input lag tester showed 3 milliseconds on Groovy Mame with a frame delay of 8. Shane Lynch noticed that the Joust 2 Mr. Core cannot flip the screen, so he decided to take it upon himself to fix that. He also asked if other cores do not have the screen flip option. If you know a core that you feel needs this option, you can respond to Shane's Twitter post. Wizzle announced that the iOS remote app for Mr. is now fully working. It's undergoing testing and then needs to go through the App Store approval process. Wizzle also said that the Android app has been updated but is still working on some approvals from the Play Store. In addition to these native mobile apps, Wizzle also has a web app that works with any device that has a browser. I really recommend these remote apps. They add so many quality of life improvements to your Mr. FPGA. And if you're interested in seeing some of these features, check out the video that I created on it. Anton Gale has made a lot of progress on the Exit E core and states that Targ and Spectre are now playable. Screenshots of Venture were also shown. If you want even more awesome wallpapers for your Mr., Robert Garcia Lago has a collection that you can have automatically downloaded to your Mr. With the latest version of Update All, you can enable these so they can be downloaded the next time you update your Mr. And remember, don't forget to also enable Ranny Snice's wallpapers. Those can also be enabled through Update All. If you want to play Nintendo 64 games with smoother frame rates, then an alternate overclock core is now available. Robert posted on Twitter some games getting better frame rates. Games like Shadow Man, GoldenEye, and Banjo Tooie. This overclock core is available on Patreon or Discord. Robert also has a Patreon post detailing what's going to be worked on in 2024. The three major things to be worked on are dual pipeline for the RSP, level of detail for the RDP, and YUV textures for the RDP. Other things that would be worked on are larger scale bug fixes, additional functionality, and accuracy fixes. Robert has a detailed Patreon post that discusses all this and the future of the core. We've gotten some Neo Geo Pocket updates. Previously, there were CPU issues that made the core difficult to debug, so a rewrite of the CPU design was implemented. And with this new design, all instructions have been implemented and the team has moved to the test phase. After that is done, the CPU will be connected to the rest of the Neo Geo Pocket core. If you follow Hotego's Twitter page, you'll see that a lot of screenshots of the core have been posted including pictures of the core running on the analog pocket. But you don't have to wait any longer if you're a subscriber to Hotego's Patreon, because a beta core for the Neo Geo Pocket Core is now available for the Mr. FPGA and the analog pocket. As with all of Hotego's cores, once the core is stable enough, it will be available publicly. Jimmy Stones is back and is now working on resurrecting an unfinished core for the Sega Gremlin hardware. He mentions that Carnival is the closest game for release, but still needs some work before an official release. Eventually, he posted a video of the game running with music, but says that the sound effects are still off. While I've never played this game in the arcade, I did play it a lot on the Atari 2600 and really enjoyed it, so it's really cool to see the arcade game coming to Mr. Several games for the Jalico Mega System 1 core have been released. These games include Hachu, a prototype of EDF, and a prototype of In Your Face. And last week, we also got more releases that include the Cutem Up plus Alpha, and a baseball game called Jitsoryoku Pro Yaku. 
Sorry if I butchered that name. If you want to support the work that the CoinOp Collection team does, you can join their Patreon. They've done a lot of work to help preserve arcade games and bring us Mr. Cores. The CoinOp Collection team have released an alpha of the Midway Y Unit Core and Smash TV and Total Carnage are playable, but other games can boot up in an unplayable state. That's the good news. The bad news is that the core is not going to get much better. The Mr. FPGA doesn't offer the FPGA resources needed for significant improvements, so work will continue on this core with the Mars FPGA. But there is the possibility of getting the game's Trog and Strike Force working for the Mr. FPGA. If you want to know the technical details of the arcade hardware and the challenges it poses for the Mr. FPGA, Promote has an excellent video that explains it. I really recommend watching it. I previously spoke about a project that uses a $20 FPGA to implement a Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, there is a project that uses the same FPGA to implement the Super Nintendo. Called the Super NES Tank, the project is currently at version 0.1 and compatibility isn't very high. But right now, it features a 720p output resolution, ROM loading from FAT32 SD cards, and a menu system for choosing the ROMs. The board shown off in the video even accepts original Super NES controllers. Check out the GitHub to see how to set it up. Update All is now at version 2.1 and has some cool new updates. There's now a new menu structure. The old menu was getting a little cramped, so things have been reorganized to streamline the choices. There is now also an analog pocket menu. Thanks to Wizzle's work, you can now connect your analog pocket to your mister to back up your saves, save states, and settings, and Update All has integrated this work. The Epsilon also developed the ability to update the Analog Pocket's firmware. In the future, a feature to sync compatible saves between games on the Mr. and Analog Pocket is being developed. These Analog Pocket features can either be ran on demand or every time you update your Mr. Something else added to update all is the addition of new databases. One of those databases include Uber Yoji's boot ROMs. These are cool ROMs that add a splash screen when you load certain cores. These can also work on real hardware. Another database added is a collection of wallpapers put together by Robert Garcia Lago. And there's also a RetroSpy database that was added. RetroSpy is a tool for streamers that can let them display their button inputs while streaming gameplay. Other maintenance updates were implemented to update all, and you can check those in the Epsilon's public Patreon post. While you're there, consider joining the Patreon. Update all is a must-have tool for Mr., and the Epsilon has done an amazing job with it that helps us keep our Misters up to date with added features. So that's it for this episode. Please also try to support Sorge, the maintainer of the Mr. Project, and other Mr. developers and contributors on support platforms such as Patreon and Ko-fi. Their hard work allows us to enjoy this amazing project. I also provide a link to all my sources in the description. Make sure to also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in block form and to get more retro-related content. And if possible, support them on Patreon too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and it's a bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.